This is my first video lesson for Unit 15, Organic Chemistry. In this lesson, we'll be analyzing organic compounds. Take a moment to download the class packet from our website and go to page 2. In the motivation, take a moment to complete this table. This is a review from Unit 5, the bonding unit. I'm going to do the first element as an example. Carbon is in group 14. Electron configuration is 2-4. It has 4 valence electrons. Number of electrons needed to become the nearest noble gas. Using the octet rule, carbon needs to gain 4 more. Number of bonds the element will make, carbon makes 4 bonds. Try to do the rest of the elements by yourself. Pause the video and resume once completed. Here are the answers. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I will be able to write and describe various formulas of organic compounds. Homework is number one, which will be the junipod based off this lesson. Let's first define and describe what is organic compound. Here are some examples of organic compound. Which element is the present or core of in all organic compounds? It is carbon. Describe the shape of these molecules. Some of these are chains and some of these are rings. For the definition, organic compound is any compound that contains carbon with CH bonds or found in living things. For the properties of organic compounds, organic compounds are considered molecules because they have covalent bonds. So their properties are very similar to covalent molecules. Here are the four common properties of organic compounds. The first one is they have very a low solubility in water, low melting points and boiling points, low conductivity and is a non-electrolyte, and slow reactivity compared to non-organic substances. Learning check number one, which element is present in all organic compounds? Pause the video, resume is completed. The answer is choice free, carbon. Learning check number two. In general, which property do organic compounds share? Pause the video, resume is completed. One of the properties is slow reaction rate. The answer is choice four. Task two is a review of structural formula from unit five. If you are familiar with structural formula, skip to task 3, which is the condensed structural formula. Structural formula shows how atoms are arranged in a compound. Think of it as like a skeleton of a compound. One bond is equal to a pair of electrons. Now we're going to review how to draw the structural formula of a substance. Let's look at H2O. The first step is to count the total valence electrons in water. Each hydrogen has one, and each oxygen has six. So the total valence electrons in H2O is 8. The next step is to figure out which element is a central atom. Since oxygen forms the most bonds and has the smallest subscript, it is a central atom. Now we're going to connect each hydrogen atom to oxygen. So there's two bonds and each bond represents two electrons. So in this step, we use four electrons and there's four left over. We're going to put the four leftover electrons onto the central atom, which is oxygen. Since there's zero electrons left over, we are done. Now let's apply the same strategy to organic compounds. Let's look at C2H6. Let's first count the total valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, and each carbon has four. So the total is 14. Using the guidelines, each carbon typically forms four bonds. Each hydrogen typically forms one bond. Therefore, carbon will be the central atom. And since there's two carbons, there'll be two central atoms. We're going to place the hydrogens around carbon. Using the guidelines, each carbon typically forms four bonds. Each hydrogen typically forms one bond. Therefore, carbon will be the central atom. And since there's two carbons, there'll be two central atoms. We're going to place the hydrogens around carbon. Now we're going to connect all the atoms. There are seven bonds or 14 electrons used in this step. So there's zero electrons left over. So this is the structural formula of C2H6. As you can see, each carbon forms four bonds. Each hydrogen forms one. Let's look at another example, C2H4. So we have two less hydrogens. The total valence electrons will be 12. Same as before. The two carbons will be the central atoms, and we're going to place the hydrogens around the carbons. Now we're going to connect them. 
there are five bonds or 10 electrons. So there's two electrons left over. We're going to place the leftover electrons onto a central atom. Notice that this carbon has fulfilled the octet rule. It has eight, but this carbon has six. Therefore, these two electrons will be shared with this carbon as well. This forms a double bond. Now each carbon has eight electrons and has fulfilled the octet rule. This is still following the guidelines. Each carbon has four bonds and each hydrogen has one bond. Let's look at another example. Here we have C2H2, two less hydrogens than the previous example. So the total valence electrons will be 10. Same as the previous examples, the two carbons will be the central atoms and the hydrogens will be around carbon. Now let's connect the atoms. There are three bonds or six electrons using this step. So there's four electrons left over. We're gonna place the four electrons onto the central atom, two in each carbon. Currently, each carbon has not fulfilled the octet rule. Each one only has six. Therefore, each carbon will share an additional electrons and form a new bond with the other carbon. Now we have a triple bond. Each carbon has fulfilled the octet rule. Let's look at our last example, CH4O. Let's first count the total valence electrons. The total is 14. Since carbon forms the most bond, it is the central atom. Now let's place the other atoms around carbon. We know from the guidelines, carbon can only form four bonds. So carbon cannot bond to every single atom here. That would be five bonds, which is impossible. Therefore, is carbon gonna bond to oxygen or hydrogen? We know hydrogen has to be non-central because it only can form one bond. Oxygen can form two. Therefore, this oxygen will bond to carbon and this hydrogen will bond to oxygen. Now let's connect the atoms. There is five bonds or 10 electrons. We still have four electrons left over. The only atom that has not fulfilled the octet rule is the oxygen. Therefore, the four electrons will be placed onto the oxygen. Now every atom has fulfilled the octet rule. And this is the structural formula of CH4O. Sometimes the lone pairs of organic compound structural formula are left out. The organic compounds still have the lone pairs, but are invisible in the structural formula. So the structural formula of CH4O is valid, even though the lone pairs on the oxygen is not shown. The lone pairs are assumed to be there. For the organic chemistry questions on the regions, sometimes the organic compound structural formula leave out the lone pairs. Learning check number three, which structural formula is incorrect? Pause the video, resume is completed. The answer is choice four, because this carbon has five bonds, which is impossible. Try to do questions five to eight on your own. Pause the video, resume is completed. Here are the answers. Task three is about the condensed structural formula. The word condensed means to make more concentrated or concise. Therefore, the condensed structural formula is writing a chemical formula showing how the atoms are connected in a structural formula with the bond dashes omitted or limited. The purpose of writing the condensed formula is that the condensed formula is a simple way that gives an idea how the molecule structure will look like without actually drawing it. Let's look at an example. Here, our chemical formula is C2H6O. The structural formula would be this. To draw or write the condensed formula, you have to read the structural formula from left to right. From the left, the group of atoms is CH3. As we move right, the next group of atom is CH2. And the last group of atoms on the right is OH. So this will be the condensed formula of this chemical formula. Notice that the condensed formula gives you more information on how the atoms are connected and how are they arranged compared to the chemical formula. Therefore, if you're given the condensed formula, it's much easier to draw the structural formula 
than if you're given the chemical formula. Now for linear versus branch. Linear is a straight chain of carbon atoms. Here's an example. This is considered a linear molecule. For a branch molecule, a hydrogen atom of a metal carbon of the chain is replaced with a carbon. Here's an example. I highlighted the branch as red. To figure out if your molecule is linear or branch, imagine the chain as the tree trunk. If there's a carbon group sticking out in the middle, then it's a branch. If it's all hydrogens, then it's linear. Parentheses is used to simplify or highlight branch groups in a condensed formula. Let's look at some examples. This is a condensed formula of this molecule. We can simplify it even further using a parentheses. Notice that these three groups are repeated. CH2 is repeated three times. Therefore, we can simplify it with a parentheses and a subscript of three. Let's look at another example with a branch. So this is the condensed formula of this one. By looking at this formula, it is not clear if it has a branch or not. Therefore, we can add a parentheses to indicate that it has a CH3 branch. You can also simplify this part further because CH2 is repeated two times. This condensed formula is much better than this one because this one is much more clear and descriptive. The parentheses help you highlight the branch groups and simplify parts of the molecule. Learning check number four, which is the correct condensed formula of the following? Pause the video, resume is completed. The best answer is choice three. For practice number two, write the condensed formula given the structural formula and the chemical formula. Try to do this yourself. Pause the video, resume was completed. Here are the answers. For practice number three, draw the structural formula given the condensed formula. Try to do this yourself. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. Here are the common conventions used in organic chemistry to represent a molecule. The Lewis structure, the structural formula, the line diagram, and the condensed formula. The only one that we did not cover yet is the line diagram. The line diagram is not on the regions, but it is the most simplest and common ways of representing organic molecules. Let's go over the rules of drawing a line diagram. The carbon atoms are not depicted with a capital C, but as a corner between two bonds or free end of a bond. So here, there's three carbon atoms. One, two, three. The carbon chain is usually drawn out in a zigzag shape. This is because each corner represents a carbon. If this was straight, you won't be able to tell if there's a carbon there or not. Hydrogens attached to carbons are generally not shown. Rather, like lone pairs are simply implied. Notice there's no hydrogen atom shown. Even though there's eight hydrogen atoms in this molecule, it is implied. Each corner carbon has two hydrogens. Each end carbon has three hydrogens. For other elements, not carbon or hydrogen, you can write the symbol. For the last rule, double bond is two lines, triple bond is three lines. For practice number four, you have to draw the line diagrams based off the structural formula. Let's look at the first example. Here we have four carbons, so we're first going to draw a zigzag with four points. One, two, three, four. So there's four carbons, one, two, three, four, and this is the line diagram of this molecule. For the second question, there are three carbons and two bromines. So the bromines we have to write because it's not a carbon or a hydrogen. Let's first draw the carbon chain, one, two, three. This is the carbon chain, there's three carbons. Now we're going to draw the bromines. The first bromine is on the second carbon. So we're going to draw a bond from the second carbon to a bromine atom. The other bromine is on the third carbon. So on the third carbon, we're going to draw a bond to a bromine atom. And this is the line diagram of this molecule. For question three, there's only one carbon. So we're going to draw a bond 
from the carbon to the OH group. This is the line diagram for question three. For question four, we're gonna draw a zigzag with five carbons. Make sure you put two lines for the first two carbons and the last two carbons. This is the line diagram for question four. Try to do the rest of the questions yourself. Pause the video, resume as completed. Here are the answers. For the last practice, Complete tables 1, 2, and 3 in your packet. Try to do it yourself. Once you finish, check the answers on the PowerPoint. Here are the answers. For table 2, table 3. This concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the Junipod homework.